additional documentations. Flask companies web uh, company search with model student zip. Please download it. I'm gonna put it in my whatever on my downloads. It doesn't matter because we're not gonna program just to be quick and not miss the opportunity of covering everything. We're gonna program straight away into Python anywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna log in and I'm gonna log in with a user. In here, I have too many things guys. So what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, do I have a volunteer? Maybe I can do with a volunteer that wants to do it and I'm going to guide it and okay Mohammed uh the Mohammed let me search for you because I may I think I may I have to make you a present Mohammed Kanafer uh make you oh I'm not a so your professor, you can just share his screen, I believe, and we can all see it. Okay, um, yeah, no, I, I think I have to stop. Am I not sharing my screen? I'm not sharing my screen right, right now, am I? No, you're not. Okay, uh, Mohammed, can you try to share your screen? Cool. Good, Mohammed. I can see your screen now. So first thing first, please go to the um, go to files. Now you're gonna upload a file. Upload the file you just downloaded, please. It's called zero eight something. Yeah, uh, not the uh, you uh, the zip file, please. It's just the one below. Good. Open. Just wait for a second. It's gonna it's gonna appear. It's uploading 70, 85 percent, 90 percent. Yeah, it's going to waiting. Yeah, it's there. It's there. Cool. Now, uh, can you see open batch console here? On the top, more or less, you have 2% two, two full, yeah, open bash console here. Good. Perfect. Now, hit ls, list, ls. Cool. Unzip space. 08 tab perfect uh, ls again just because my um this okay it's called it's called very complete the directory is too big so please do one thing so just to, to make the, the directory uh, uh, uh shorter just put mv move mv space 08 tab space and put uh rfa risk and fraud analytics perfect enter ls perfect you have the rfa directory just exit now please exit enter can you see the hamburger share with others option you can hit the share with others to share with your group okay you tell the username of your or the email of your group so your group can actually have total control of your bash or total control of your file so you can work together here okay guys 
but don't do it now so that you know that you can share with others the cons the console and you can share the code but just close it please with the x and hit the hamburger that the uh, option the menu option on the on the right there share with others and then the hamburger yeah no problem yeah good and then please go to um what do you need to go web guys uh he has already set up a website so please go down i'm gonna ask you to delete because you've been the volunteer when i'm gonna check that you have done the task i'm gonna try to remember that you have done it mohammed <laughs> okay so add a new web app please next we're gonna do it with flask we're gonna do it python 3.8 and then when it when it says my site, don't, uh, we change it to RFA, right? RFA. Good. Go down, please. One more thing, guys. Before going, I don't know why they they don't put it the source code equal to the working directory well i actually know it but it's too much detail to, to explain why they don't but i prefer to have the two at the same because it avoids problems so please click on the source code path can you see the source code path um just click it control uh just select everything please Control C or Command C if you want, I think you're on Mac, so Command C. And then Working Directory, please click on Working Directory. And then, yeah, the same. Oops, it's, it wasn't Com Command C and Command V. Uh, you have to hit the um, actual, the, the check button. Perfect. So now you have the two the same, so that will avoid uh, many problems. So please do that the first time you, you run this thing. And then please go up now and reload your website. Perfect. It's really good to have to have a helping hand, Mohammed. Thank you. The now can you right click with Mac? Yeah, perfect. So go on, on where you have the link, configuration for, and right click on that, please. Right click, and then open in a new tab. So the first option. So you have the two available, okay? And what do you have there? If you click on the, so just a hello from Flask. So people that haven't done anything, well, I'm gonna explain what you have now. So come back to the web, please. Now hit, click on files, please, Mohammed. Good. Go to RFA on the on the left. Uh, Mohammed already have a my site and other options, but Mohammed, what he has is that he um, he just created a new website, and when he creates a website, Flask creates automatically a Flask app dot pi here. And what it puts is just a simple, very simple code. Can you open it, please, Mohammed? And it just put the, the few things that you need. And what do you need to do a Flask? You need uh, uh, from Flask, import Flask, app, you create. So you, you, you're basically working on an or, or object-oriented language. So object-oriented language, you always have to do three things. Import the library, instantiate the object, and then use the object. Okay, so that's the, the line 8 to line 10. So that's use it. You always have to import it and instantiate. Uh, sorry for that, the Python is object-oriented. Uh, when you compare it to R, you don't need, you normally you don't need to instantiate. Python always have to instantiate. When you instantiating things is where you put the parameters. So the name there is, is one parameter. Everywhere in Python, you're going to see that where does the, where do I set the parameters for the stuff I'm doing? It's always on the instantiation. So remember it. It's just a, it's just a, 
feel, look and feel of Python, okay? We're not gonna change it right now. Um, Mohammed, I'm gonna ask you to go to, um, yeah, on the hamburger again, on the, yeah, there. Yeah, that's fine, or if you go to the, yeah. Go to account on the top, next to the logout account. And then there is a teacher tab. Can you see security email teacher account? Yeah, just put MF Alonso there, please. MF Alonso, oh, MF Alonso. Thank you very much because I'm now your teacher. So meaning that I can, I can see your account. And on top of that, I can do a change. I can do changes to your account. So I think your account is called NAF sixty uh, forty seven, right? Can you op can you open a? Can you go to console now, console? And can you click on the batch console? Hello, Mohammed. I'm I'm in here. Well, I wrote really badly, but anyways. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like Google Docs. Cool. Um, we're not going to be doing. Um, I'm going to stop with Mohammed a second. Uh, no, let's let's show a, a cool thing, and then we go for Mohammed. We go for a little bit of fury. Okay, uh, go back to the files. Yeah, just hit the the anaconda or whatever it is, a spider or something like that, right? Yeah, cool. Go to files. Go to RFA, please. Then Flask app .py. First thing we're gonna do, uh, I want you to render template the index. So return, take this text out. So remove the text, please. The whole thing with the, with the yeah. Put render underscore template. Don't know what that symbol is, but anyway, yeah. And then uh, parentheses. Uh, open the um, comma, the yeah, and then index.html. Close it, brackets, save it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Render template should be imported. So if you save it, it's going to save it, please, because it's going to complain. Uh, can you can you see the comp Undefined name render template. You should put render template next to Flask at the at the top. So just comma render template. Yeah. So it's ready to you're ready to go. Uh, can you see the reload button there next to the run? Never hit run unless you know what you're doing. Okay. That you shouldn't at this point. Reload your web. Go to the tab NAFR 97 there on the, yeah, just control F5. Wow, Mohammed, what have you done? <laughs> you just set up, yeah, I'm really, I'm really sorry. I had a version of this index that is actually translated into English. I just forget to get it. Oh, don't be so quick. It's not working yet. You basically loaded uh, index.html. Mohammed, I'm gonna come back to you. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna um, share my screen, explain a couple things, and then I'll come back with you. Okay, guys, where where is it? Flask bootstrap, and here we come. You can see my screen, right? Guys, we know Python is really cool, and we know that we can do functions in Python, but my function in Python is so cool that I want to make it, my function in Python is so cool, so cool, that I want to make it available for the world to use it. 
Imagine I've inv invented the Coca-Cola formula or the, the formula to calculate um, how to make money on the investment on the stock market or I don't know, you, you name it, whatever you've done that is so cool. So you, this is your little Python code in here. How do you make this Python code available to the world? Well, should I put it on my own computer, connect it to the internet, and then make it available via, um, you don't know the name, but it's a socket, and those guys, they, they, so that they connect it via a port, and should I know all this stuff to put it available to the world? You don't need it. Welcome to Flask. Well, guys, or if you know Spanish, that is a matras. Uh, the, the name of Flask, okay? Flask is this thing here. There are more frameworks for putting Python into the uh, into web development. My one, my my preferred one. I know Django and Flask. I my prefer and Bottle Bottle as well. My preferred with no uh, without comparison is Flask for its simplicity, for its clarity, and for because it follows the, um, the Python rule of making it very simple for the, for the user, okay? So basically, if you go to most of the web development frameworks over there, what you do is you define a function, and in Flask you can do it as well. You define a function like this, and then you tell add a URL rule, and you tell when somebody calls it with a Y, my function you call it a function handle route to this is the how you call your function right however this is for me when you get used to the way of that flask works it's so natural to see what something called decorator and the, this decorator what is basically doing when you says app dot route and you put the route here is basically saying when somebody calls the X, it actually calls my function. So what you're saying, Professor, is that somebody's calling on the over the internet and you calling my function internally on Python here? Yeah, that's it. So basically, if you magically put this decorator here, you can use the first option, but I mm, nobody does it people simply use the decorator here on the top and it makes your function available to the world. So something like this, if you say from Flask import Flask and you instantiate Flask, what's name here is main, it's basically the name of your program, okay? And then you say decorator slash, that's normally the index of your, sorry, of your function and you can, return a hello world you basically returning a string guys you always it you running something on http what's http anybody knows what's it stands for google http it's hypertext transfer protocol hypertext transfer protocol thank you very much vivek and it means text Hyper, trans, hyper protocol text, 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 text. Can I send a number? No. Can you send a data frame? No. Can you send? No. Text. But how can you transfer a text? How can you transfer a data frame? In text format. How can you send an image? In text format. Everything is text. So that's the, oh, but don't worry. Flask handles it to you. So you can send a data frame and Flask handles things into text. So basically this is text, this is text, this is text. And as and this is how you run the, the actual thing. This is like a Python code that never ends because it keeps here the app dot run and it keeps here listening to the web to see if anybody's sending something. Here I'm I'm hearing port 5000 but normally on the internet, we, we listening to the port um, 80 or the 443, that is the SSL, but you don't need to know that. It's just, you hearing the, the port that is open on the internet. Good, so 
it's really interesting that when you call it, I'm calling here in a local machine. So this is your local host or your IP address or your Python anywhere account user. This is the port. When it's 80, you can actually not mention it. And then you put the slash, the route, and the variables. We're going to see it in as it work in the in reality right now, okay? But the good thing is that Flask handles it for you. It handles it if you're going to talk to a browser and you're going to handle HTML, JavaScript, CSS, or if you're going to talk to a machine and you're going to apply API, JSON, or HTML, XML, okay? If you're talking to a Python, you don't need this to be to appear good the appearance doesn't matter so you use a different um, type of uh, way of sending the information but flask helps you on all that job so you don't need to know it it's a good idea if you study it later but so enough with the theory okay Let's get back with Mohammed. Mohammed, can you share your screen again, please? Mohammed? Cool. And Mohammed, I'm going to ask you to go to your. Good. Now, Mohammed, let me put it in. Yeah, so you, you are on the Python, right? Files. Go to RFA, please. And flask.py. So you actually render templates. So what's render template does render templates go to the tab to the directory called templates and gets the file index.html and what it does is interpret that index html and returns it as a long string of text so what's it re actually returning a string of text there is something called um jinja that is a template engine that is going to operate on that index.html if you want to understand it, okay? So that's called Jinja. We're not going to do much in Jinja right now. So the only thing I'm going to ask you is, Mohammed, can you go to the menu? Please right click and right, uh, right click over, uh, no, left click, sorry, left, normal click, sorry, on the, on the menu and then right click on files and open in a new tab. So I need a couple of tabs here because we're gonna be check the, checking the code and also checking the another file. So go to the files, please, the next tab, the tab on the right. Yeah, RFA, then go to templates. Can you see templates here? So inside templates, you have an index.html. Open it, please. Good. This index, guys, it's already done for you. So you don't need, we're not going to be uh, exploring too much about it right now. But the only thing is that when you see as the symbol on line 31, that is, um, curly bracket and a, and a percentage on line 31. It's just not up here, 31. 32, sorry, 32. Uh, 32, uh, so this is actually calling, it's from within the HTML, you calling Python. The name of the engine that is actually doing the Python thing is called Jinja, but basically you're calling Python there. So if result, you're doing something, doesn't matter. The, the thing that I'm gonna show you guys is that, can you see the DF there? 
on the line 61. Do you guys know how to operate data frames? I suppose you do, right? I'm joking. So what am I going to do is I'm going to pass a data frame, guys, to this guy. Because I can press, I can put data frame information right away into the HTML. And I'm using the for loop here and the iLock as well as in Python. But to, to have it in Python, I need it either to be using the curly bracket, but the curly bracket with the percentage is for if for or the double curly bracket is for variables, okay? Good. Uh, can you go to the Flask app, please, uh, Mohamed? That's on the tab next to that. Okay, how do I pass this DF to the, to the other side? Oh my. How do I pass it? It's quite simple. First, I have to have it. But in any case, you're going to see, you're going to do, uh, you pass it with comma. So index, comma, df equal to df. No, you don't, you, you don't have the df. So let's import the df first. It's a little bit of a lot of code. <laughs> so Mohammed, can I do a magic here? I, yes, for sure. Go ahead. Okay. I, sorry, guys. I'm not gonna do the the English version because I got it the wrong one. So I'm gonna do a magic thing. Uh, get off the code, please, Mohammed. Open the code again. It's too much to write, okay? <laughs> so what is it doing, Mohammed? There is a company balance sheet database there on your database. It's a SQL light. And we're going to read all the data from there. Can you see it with PD read SQL? What is in there? And you guys have it, okay? What is in there? basically all the five excel files that you have on your group project is the same data okay guys it's just that it's in a database format okay so basically i'm getting rid of the i'm reading all the data i'm setting the display to be not not um scientific anyway that's on the line 10 and then i'm renaming the variables uh, the problem is I'm renaming it in, into Spanish. I can search for for the English right now and get it because I I have it somewhere here. Before before when when I finish the class I send it and I I'm gonna post the Flask app code and I post it correctly. Okay, in, in English. Don't don't worry. So now you have a DF, right, Mohammed? Can you see it? That you have it? It's global. So you have a DF, it's available on the function, right? Because it's a global variable. So go to line 34. Please. And before the parentheses, just pass a, par a parameter. How do you just pass a parameter? So after the index, put comma. After index, then the bracket that just before the part the last parenthesis mohammed just before the last parenthesis inside the parenthesis after the index you put comma df equal to df done save it run it uh reload it please now go to the last tab that you have on the top The last last tab. Oh, it's not. It's not Mohammed. Oh, what's what happened? What happened to your? Oh, yeah. So you you go there to uh, web, web, and click on the blue one. Yeah, over there. 
Perfect. Now, Mohammed, search for a Spanish company like Repsol. Wait, don't, yeah, no, don't, don't go so quick. What? Is it not working? Why is it not working? Uh, refresh it again, Mohammed. Search for, uh, oh my. What's your knuff for? What's your user? What's, it go what's going on here? Come back there. Yeah, no, uh, web, just give me a second. Right. Mm. Plus the app. So you have the F equals to the F. Uh, wait a minute. I'm going to check one thing. Oh, my word. Okay, I'm missing one variable. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, my bad. I have to send it the list of index. So uh, after the comma, sorry. So DF equal to DF and then comma and then put IDs, IDS equal to list, parentheses, range, parentheses, length, parentheses, DF. Oh, LEN, LEN, sorry, LNN. -N. Yeah, DF. Close, close, close. Cool. Save it and run it again. Sorry, my bad. Uh, reload it, reload it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Reload the web. Cool. Come back to the searcher. Reload the web as well there. What's going on? Uh, how many? Oh, you have to have four close uh, parentheses, not five. How many you have there? Uh, go to the top, uh, go to the, uh, to the um, sorry, to the X, uh, syntax error. What is it saying? Just try right. to save it once. Uh, if there's no error, the cross will go away. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So reload it. Go there. Yeah, click. Run it again. Cool. Now search for Repsol. Yeah, well, no, no, no. wow, Mohammed, what have you done? Yeah, you haven't implemented any. <laughs> You've just put it up um, a searcher where you can search for the name of the company, Mohammed. Did you see it? You grab it from the data set. Cool, Mohammed. Next. Uh, good. Let's let's do one more thing. The problem that you have now, Mohammed, is that when you use it, it's calling a router that doesn't exist. So run the run the the thing, please. No, 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 oh, not run. Never hit run. No, never hit run. I, I meant, sorry, I meant on the on the search on the web actually on the on the application. Yeah, that when you search for any company there, and you search for it, and then you click it, it's. Can you see that you that you go into nafer pythonanywhere.com slash buscador? That's the can you see it? You need a router for Buscador. So go to the to the app, Flask app, please. And let's create, a, yeah, put, click exit on the bottom, on the bottom of the black. So exit, open and, open and close parentheses. Exit, open and close parentheses. Yeah, okay, then you can, 
put it down, no, make it smaller. Good. Good. Now copy the line 32 to line to line 34, paste it down, paste it on line 36, for example. Cool. And now can you see that you have up route slash? Put it buscador. Perfect, Mohammed. And then call the function, call the function buscador as well. Because your Python function on line 38, it shouldn't repeat the name of the function. You cannot have two functions in Python with the same name. So put it search or buscador. Open and close parentheses. And to start with, Mohammed, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is simply what I'm gonna say is get rid of the index stuff in, entirely. All the render template and everything, just to return and simply return the word buscador or search. Get rid of the of the render template. I just want the text. The text buscador. Close it, save it, reload it. Go back on 404. Just you can just reload it actually. Yeah, go. Yeah, if you go, if you just run again. Wow, Mohammed, you are inside buscador. Can you see? You are able to call that function. Let's do something with it then. What I'm going to do right now, Mohammed, is I'm going to ask you to first return the data from for that company. Okay? The guy is actually asking the for Repsol data, right? So on line 38, just hit enter at the end, create a, a blank line between 38 and 39, please, and put data equal df bracket uh, square bracket df inside the uh, now i'm going to filter and i'm going to say df bracket again nif and nif big letters and it's going to be text right because it's uh the name of the column that's the name of the column that i'm going to search for and i'm going to say if that column is equal 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 no, 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 not on the data. That's a assign, assign, assignation, assignment. Yeah, that's that's in there. Request dot args args, and then brackets. Uh, not call, not parentheses. Brackets, square brackets. Sorry. Yeah. Now I'm gonna. I'm gonna say, Mohammed, I forgot the name of the the parameter that somebody that the person is sending me. Let's go to the to the tab, three tabs. Can you see that the guy is saying bu, sending buscador nif equal to blah blah blah? So the name is n i f in small letters. Can you see? Go back to the Python code. So the guy is sending a parameter. So that's a that's a string. Mm -hmm. N I F. Cool. Amazing. Uh, and then what you need to do now is close the second bracket and just to make just to make it safe, please do data. Dot data. Uh, dot, sorry, dot head. Dot head one. Okay, just to make it safe. And then parenthesis one inside. Cool. Uh, if you save it, it's going to complain. Save it. It's going to complain. And it's basically going to complain because request, request is not imported. So reported. It's on after render template. It's part of Flask as well. Request. Amazing, Mohammed. Reload it. And now what I'm going to ask you to do is, Mohammed, uh, is you're not returning it, so go back to the flask, please. Yeah, take the take the letter they, uh, this letter this thing out and do data dot hey two html two t 
to underscore HTML. It's a function, so open and close parentheses. Save it, reload it, and call it. Just, just hit it again. Mohammed, what have you done? You got the data, right? I don't like it. Mohammed, I don't like it. Uh, go back to the flask. And before, af before the two HTML and, and after the data, put a letter big T to transpose the data. So data dot big T dot to HTML. Save it, reload it. And hit run. Oh my, the thing is getting better, right? Cool. Guys, go uh, now go back to the web, please, Mohammed. Uh, like, like no the the naf. Let's see what we have there to the to the actual web. Uh hit backwards here. Or yeah, just take it off. The actual web has a check for JSON option there, right? And I don't like it that you that you search for things and the actual search bar disappears, Mohammed. I don't like that very much. So what I'm going to ask you to do is go back to the Flask app, please. And I'm going to ask you to do the, the following. Call it in the line 41, rename it return to data HTML. So data underscore, no, 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 just assign it. I'm gonna do it for you, okay, Mohammed? Close it, please. And oops. And reopen. <laughs> Basically, yeah, I renamed it and I said, yeah, so save it, reload it. Just so that we a bit, a bit quicker. Okay, cool. Now call it again, Mohammed. If you're tired of calling Repsol, you can call another one. Okay, like. Uh, Iberia, I think there is, oh, what's going on? It mm -hmm. froze for some reason, I don't know, I just, uh... All right, all right, all right. Yeah, sometimes it's. It's my Google Chrome, it's not the. Uh... Uh, I'm not sure if it's. I don't, it's, all right, it's got, yeah, something is, is going mad. Oh, it's, it's starting to work now on mine. Mine is still frozen. Okay, um, what's going on? Uh, no problem here. Excess brackets. Okay, cool. The so what it, what we're gonna do is let's uh, go back to the flask. We're gonna suppose this works. I, I can't even go to the tabs. I think it's my Google oh, is it, that is crashing. Maybe oh oh here it is. Okay, it returned. Okay, okay, search it and let it go. Perfect, Mohammed. Can you see that now? You have the um, the HTML. It's not beautiful. Okay. It's not pretty, but it comes back on the uh, on the same as the or as the, the search tab, right? And now, what happened, Mohammed? If you click on the Repsol again and you click the check for JSON, uh. 
uh, nothing, right? So shall we implement that, right, Mohammed? Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. So basically, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna ask you to do is uh, put a if online third line forty. So Mohammed, if you don't mind, just because we eight minutes, I'm gonna take control. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sure. I'll I'll gonna do on your account. Can you see my computer? Yes, you can. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna go here because I really wanted to to do the model development. So, guys, basically, what Mohammed needed to do that I was saying is to do a if here and. Yeah, here it is. If JSON is on the request because Mohammed just clicked the word JSON here, so now JSON should be here. So if JSON is there, we should return to JSON, not to HTML, and we should say orient records. Okay, it's just an option so that it looks better, okay? Otherwise, it returns the HTML. If I save it and reload it, and I don't need even to call it again, what can I do? It calls, it comes as a JSON. It comes as a JSON. And now, what is this thing that I'm creating? This is actually something that helps me to automatically create the create the um, the actual caller here. And what am I gonna do now? What am I gonna do is simple. I'm gonna say, well, I have. It's actually creating the options here, as you can see. It's putting here the options. So. What am I gonna do right now is this. I'm gonna come here, where is the simple? And I'm gonna say, Mohammed, you know what? I wanna implement a model. And I'm gonna say spider, and in spider, I'm gonna develop a quick model. It's gonna be very quick. Okay, Mohammed, I'm gonna get this, same, this data. And basically, I'm going to say, well, this is the target variable. I'm going to simply create four variables, a beta income, a, that a beta, um, the leverage, and the log operating income. By the way, that's the ones that are on your group project to start with. This is the same model, right? Just that it's grabbing the data from balance sheet here now. OK, why are you, why are you doing that, professor? You will see. You will see. I'm gonna grab the, the file here and I'm gonna hit run. So let's suppose I have a very cool model. Guys, I have a very cool model that I'm creating. How do I put this model into production? And I'm gonna try to do it in front of you. So first I have to wait until this thing comes up. Uh, yeah, it's, it's done. So this is the model. I just trained the model. Okay. It's very simple. I know it's a pretty rubbish model, by the way. The important thing is, Mohammed, you need to come here and upload the file. So first thing first, you have the model. You upload the model. That's how to put a model into production. You grab the job lead file. This joblib file is exporting the model to a file. I know this is what I'm doing right here is Windows. Mohammed was in, in Mac and Python anywhere is in Linux, okay? So maybe Mac developed model doesn't run really well on Linux. I know that this one works, okay? The one I I've trained. I'm waiting for the model to be uploaded, by the way, okay? Right, right, right. So the model is going up. Please 
Come on, works. Good. So meanwhile, I'm gonna say to the model that it's really taking a while. Uh, okay, so the, the thing that, he, that I need to do is first, I'm gonna request for the model to be calculated. Yeah, the model is here. Good. So now that the model is in here, what can I do? I can import the model. So to import the model, I just need to do one thing. I actually need the NumPy later, so I'm gonna copy it right now, okay? So basically I have to load the model and I'm gonna call it Modelo. I'm gonna call it Model. So I save it, NumPy is never being used, doesn't matter. It will be used in the future. So what I'm gonna do? I need the model to run. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to index, that's Mohammed index, and I'm gonna say, you see here the checkbox for JSON is hit here for checkbox for JSON. Mohammed, I'm gonna do a second checkbox, and I'm gonna say, Mohammed, please tell, give me the model, check for model, and default, no model. Good, if I hit here and reload it, what is gonna happen is that I'm gonna have a second option there, Mohammed. Something went wrong. My world. What went wrong? No module SK learning symbol. Hmm. No module. Ah, uh, is it for because of the reason because of my version? The 3.8 version? I just. Come on. Hello? The, I do have one that worked. I can't believe it's something to do with the. I'm going to go from your account, Mohammed, and I'm going to go here because I've just done it yesterday. And this is the model working. And this is the account of the student that does work, Belen. She has the model here. And basically, She has the option here, check for Modelo. And I get Repsol and I check for JSON and check for Modelo. And now I get the probability of default log of operating income. And, and maybe the problem is that Belen was using a different version of Python, maybe not, Python 3.8. Mm. That's no good. Anyways, now that we have one that works, so the important thing on the Belen thing, this one that works, is that for calculating the model for putting the model into production, I have to calculate the four variables that were calculated before. Those are the variables that were calculated before. And if I hit run on the Modelo here, 
it has to be in the exactly same order, the x, to be able to calculate the prediction. So that we we finish this, we finish today's class, and you understand everything related to this is why are you actually doing this, professor? Is that if we have this as numeric now, I have a website that calculates everything, and if I'm on an if I'm doing, um, what's the name, analytics as a service, I could now get it, get it to a friend or to a company and sell this prediction. So this is the probability of default, right? And how does somebody uses it? Well, guys, this is actually easy because the way of invoking the code is like this. So you basically use import URL. That's your Python code here, by the way. And you call it from here. And I am, I simply can get the probability of default using this. I know we haven't used, we haven't done everything with the Mohammed one. However, I'm gonna come back to Mohammed and I'm going to say, well, by the way, I'm going to take off the Modelo, by the way, from Mohammed. I'm going to save it. Oh, there was an error saving, and the error is because files. No, I need to go out and enter as MF Alonso. MF Alonso, and then I enter as Mohammed. That's Nar. Where is it? Here it is. Flash up. up. Mohammed, I gotta take off the Modelo because we are seeing an issue with the Modelo. No problem. And I know that on your website, we can easily go here into the web, click it, it opens. The Modelo part is not working, but if I hit Repsol here and check JSON, it does grab the data, right? So this part that I'm gonna share with you guys, everyone can do it everyone can go to Mohammed and ask what's the status of the company you just go there and say what's the status and here we go activa that's active that's active so I'm going to share with you guys on the chat. And if you copy it and paste it on your Python, you would be using Mohammed's code, Mohammed's prediction code. So basically, Mohammed is grabbing data from a data set. And the only part is that the model had some issue that I can look into later, OK? Any question, guys, you can call it. You're calling it straight away Mohammed's code. And thank you very much, Mohammed, for the, for the help. Thank you, Professor. Um, guys, so the, question, the, the class today were intended to give a little help understanding what you're doing on the group project. Remember, the next class, you have to present your own model implemented in your own model mm, improved, right? 